Today's question comes from Kareen at New Body Pilates in the UK. So let me address hyperextension of the elbow. We have a lot of students that are really hypermobile in the elbow, especially when they address when they load it. So I wanted to address loading. So for the today's um, question and answer, I'm gonna take all the springs off, push the carriage open. Now, we oftentimes use the shoulder rest. I'll just stand aside it. We use the shoulder rest in different positions like this. So if I am, let's say, doing something where I'm loaded like this, what I want to make sure is when I am loading the joint, what takes pressure off the joint is two things. Number one, the lats and pecs, the muscles that make the front and the back of the armpit. Now I'm making this very simple and there is a much deeper tutorial on the website for those. This is obviously to those who are watching it now uh, when this was recorded. This was made before the website was launched, but within the website and for those on YouTube that are just kind of scouring through questions on here, um, there's a full length tutorial on elbow cap pressure, which is what I'm going to quickly touch on today. So Karina asks when she's loading it and she's locked out, the reason why the joints are locked out is because the Latin pec are not supporting above the joint. When the Latin pec above the elbow joint in this specific uh, setup, it prevents the elbow from remaining open because the load is so intense that it will lock out. Now, let's talk about, I think it's called triple extension. If I remember correctly, that's how I was taught it. Where you do a snatch and you take your arms up and you lock everything out. The reason why we want to do triple extension is because if that's 600 pounds above our head, the tissue on the elbow and the shoulder actually cannot support that. So you have to put bone on bone. Literally, you lock them out and you stack the bones on each other. And that's, that prevents the dislocation of joints when you have a heavy load. Taking that upside down in this example, if I do not have the proper muscular support, so we're opposite to that. That was an example of an overhead load compromising the elbow and shoulder joint. This is an example of gravity and the upper body load going down onto the joint, which is just an example that's completely upside down to that. So obviously it's not 600 pounds, but it's a, it's a load on the joint. If the pecs and lats are not activated, and I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna activate my lats and pecs. Now they're on. I can feel when my lats and pecs are on, it's really hard to lock that elbow out. So that's your first indication, Kareem. Whether or not you have the proper muscular support above the joint, which is gonna take the load out of the elbow because it's, it's being held here. That's super important. Secondarily, when you are locking your elbow, you will feel the muscles relax at the shoulder, the pecs and lats. The load will go into the shoulder instead of into the lats and pecs. And also you'll notice a huge difference on your ability or inability to lock that elbow. It actually turns all the muscles on of the shoulder, which relax the tension in the elbow and the wrist. And when I talk about elbow cap pressure, I wanna make sure if somebody were to come up to me at any point in time during this exercise and try to whack my elbow, do I have enough pressure in the elbow to sustain that force forward or backward? If I come down and I just test it, and this is what I will do with students, I will have them put their hand on, knee on the bed, and just see when I, when I push it, does it hyperextend? And I'm not gonna push really hard, please don't. I'm just showing you so you get this. So when I get my lats and pecs to support the joint and my elbow cap has pressure, I'm stable. If I allow it to lock out, if a force were to come behind me, it would totally hurt the joint. But if I'm set like this and a force came behind me, I can sustain that. And I had to learn the hard way from years and years of improper mechanics during the gym when I had my skiing injury and my right arm sustained the force from hitting the ground. 
why everything dislocated is because I didn't have proper lats and pecs activating to stabilize and to take that load, to take that force into the shoulder through the hand. That's why I hurt my elbow and I dislocated my shoulder. So to go back to the simple basic principle, making sure your lats and pecs above the joint are supporting it so the load isn't going into the elbow, it's being stopped at the shoulder. And also that you're not locking or overly bending it, that you have an energy up, not an energy down, and that's gonna come from the lats and pecs and of course the abdominal supporting the, the shoulder girdle. And the light elbow cap pressure to keep the joint from locking. So try those out. If that, if that addressed and hit home and you understand that, leave a comment, let me know. If that still left you with questions, when the website launches, I want you to watch the tutorial on elbow cap pressure. I'll go into a little bit more detail. But see if what's going to help prevent locking and hyperextending the elbow joint is proper mechanics of the uh, proper muscle activation of the lats and pecs above the, sh the elbow when you're in a side plank or even a quadruped position. Thanks for watching.